welcome back to the show. Everybody wants to know, should they, shouldn't they be on social media and how should they strategize? Indeed, Clayton Mitchell joining us, marketing consultant, and we're talking about social media strategy today, not only for corporations, but for people and your own brand mm -hmm. as well. Hey Clayton, how are you? Good, how are you guys doing? Good. So what do you do as a social media strategist? Uh, typically, you just work with companies and uh, try to help educate them on where they should be going. And a lot of companies sort of jump into the social media space without giving it much right. thought. So it's kind of like backing up the truck for them a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I, I mean, there is a, a demographic that sort of tends to be running companies, but doesn't necessarily immerse yeah. themselves in social media personally. And I, I think that's where that that problem comes sometimes is, you know, you want to be involved, but mm -hmm. you don't know how to do it. Yeah, it's like a big separation, right? And a lot of uh, the older generation that's sort of the decision makers for companies grew up with like TV, radio, so they're not really TV. used to it. Who yeah, would be on that? TV. I have no what idea. a waste of time. No, I'm kidding. Uh, what is the purpose for companies in general of being on social media? And we know Facebook mm. for the general population yeah. is really to socialize and yeah. talk to their friends, but when it comes to companies, what is the purpose? You know what, it's a great question. It kind of depends on the company and what they want to do, but that's where a lot of companies sort of fall short. They kind of use that circular reasoning of, well, my competitors are we on Facebook, yeah. so <laughs> I should be on Facebook instead of actually thinking about why they're trying to be mm -hmm. on social yeah. media. And how much of that conversation should happen before you're, you're delving into it? I mean, really mm, a lot. drilling down into why we're doing it in the first place. And this can be individual as well as corporate mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah, uh, it's for both, right? I mean, there's a lot of personal branding that happens online as well. So a lot of people can sort of further advance their career. And a lot of companies are actually looking to see things like your clout score now. Mm -hmm. What's your clout score online to see if you actually have any sort of influence? And for all. those who don't know, what is that? <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a totality of your interactions online and how many people are following you and how many people are repurposing your content. And the measurements aren't perfect. And yeah. But it gives an idea that you do have influence yeah. on well, social media. And I how fascinating. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're going to you know, talk a lot about corporations and stuff, but how interesting sure. that this is part of most companies' hiring process now is seeing yeah. how people are, are mm -hmm. activating their own social yeah. media and how they're actually using you know, whatever soapbox they're sort of building as well. Yeah, I've heard for bands as well, mm -hmm. like uh, in the band world, like to get a record contract now, you need like at least 50,000 Facebook likes, for instance. Really? So really? there's a lot of companies, a lot of organizations that are putting a lot of stress on your own personal Facebook or your personal Twitter accounts as well, yeah. And when it comes to Twitter and companies, a lot of companies hire out somebody very young, probably mm -hmm. don't pay them a lot of money or sometimes even interns yeah. to tweet for your company. Uh, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Because sometimes, you know, when I'm following Not a company, and somebody's talking about what they have for lunch. I'm like, what is, what, what is going on? So what should people do if they don't have time to tweet themselves? Yeah, outsourcing is a questionable one because typically if you're working in the company, you know your company or your brand better than anyone else does. Uh, so outsourcing, it's not the always the wisest idea. Yeah. Uh, you kind of want someone to be internal. Uh, who really go on knows cheap. your brand. Yeah, who really understands it and really knows how to communicate what you want to communicate. Yeah, and some of the most interesting companies and some of the most e interesting examples that I'm seeing now, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's on Facebook or on Twitter or Pinterest or whatever it is, yeah. uh, are, are enhancements of the experience that you expect. So whether it's yeah. television, whether it's radio, whether it's a you know mom and pop company, this is something that's an added bonus to, mm -hmm. to what you're already getting, right? Yeah, it's all about sort of deepening that experience that people typically have with your organization, whether it be a product uh, interchange or uh, some sort of transaction, but you could really develop the story for companies. And so you see a little bit of more movement towards storytelling yeah. and breaking down the experience into the various components. Right. So for you know this TV show as an example, because there's such a, you know, it's a really dynamic show. You have the personalities are part of the experience. You have the viewers that are part of the experience. Uh, and you the have, guests too, of course. Yeah, we have yeah. stories as well. So yeah. there's a lot of opportunity to really go beyond what you see in this show as an well, example. Let's talk about added value content sure. with our program. Because okay. you had us do a little yes, task yeah. yesterday. Yeah, just for fun. Sure. You, uh, we had no idea why, but one of our producers came in and said, Mike, Fiona, for the segment, you guys have to draw a cat. Draw a picture of a now, cat. Now, neither Mike Mine nor was awesome, I by the way. You were about to are really good artists. So 
uh, you asked them to post it on our Twitter and also on our Facebook. Yeah. And maybe you can tell us the purpose of this and what you learned from our uh, interactions with our folks on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> okay, uh, have I learned a lot? I don't know yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I did learn that you're a much better artist than Mike, in my opinion, and uh, that's okay. I learned that Clayton's a jerk. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I, gotta, I gotta say, uh, it was a really interesting experience. Uh, what you're basically trying to do is bring the viewers into it, because mm -hmm. they really want to interact with you. They see your personalities. I mean, you guys are sort of playing off each other and having fun competitions all the time anyway, so why not bring that into the social media world to sort yeah. of expand it? Uh, and then, of course, just trying to leverage something that's incredibly popular on social media, which cats. are cats. God. Cats. You what guys, is it with cats? Well, cats yeah. are awesome, number yes. one, but secondly. They're funny. Yes. It's fascinating. Every thing. internet thing leads to a cat video. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, some good examples and bad sure. examples of what been talking sure. about. Maybe we'll start with the good and some companies that in your opinion are, are sort of doing the right things and, and making the right moves. First one, Cheese Works. Yeah, no, I brought in some examples that are small companies because mm -hmm. I really want to illustrate the idea that you don't have to have a ton of resources yeah. to be able to pull you it off You don't have to well. have a marketing division, promotion. Yeah, like, you don't. Simple. Simple, keep it simple. These guys are interesting because they actually had a huge amount of Facebook followers. They reported a, a, as high as 750 before the store even opened. <laughs> which, or it's a restaurant. But yeah. yeah, before the restaurant even opened, they had 750 people. They were bringing in Facebook fans to sample the menu before they opened. They were. Uh, what a great way to interact. Yeah, and they were building a buzz around it. They were keeping progress of the restaurant. It was yeah. being built. And so they were just keeping people involved even before anything happened. Because the worst thing is when you're a business and you start a fan page, website, blog, Twitter, what have you, and you don't update it. Because you will lose people immediately. Yeah, there's kind of a rule. It's better to not have nothing at all yeah. than something that isn't being right. used. Yeah. So is there a perfect number for that? I mean, when it comes for businesses, uh, is there a perfect number for postings, how frequently, how quickly you update? That's an interesting one. I, again, it kind of depends on the company. Um, so different uh, platforms will use different rules. So you see uh, some studies say that the average tweet lasts about an hour, an hour and a half. Right. Facebook's a little bit different. Uh, the goal on Facebook, Facebook is... Facebook lasts forever, ever. Well, ever. <laughs> yeah, but you... Mark yeah. Zuckerberg owns you, owns yeah. you, owns But you. I mean, talking about retention yeah. and when you send out a message yeah. or, or you're the posting something it. on Facebook, how long is that actually... Again, it depends on the company. Okay, so here's how it works. Facebook uses an algorithm called EdgeRank. And EdgeRank is actually the sum of three different factors. So uh, affinity, weight, and time. So affinity is like how often someone likes or comments on your post. A yeah. comment is stronger affinity than a like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then there is weight, which depends on what kind of content you post in your status update. So a photo oh, wow. and video is weighted heavier weighted. Yeah. than it's a hyperlink. Cerebral. Yeah, really? it is, and, and uh, that's rated higher than just a text-based status update. But interesting for businesses to know when they're mm -hmm. deciding what kind of content to post, you know, when you're using yeah. those algorithms and you're deciding, it's, that makes sense. And so, yeah, so you, you see this Facebook status update, uh, some of them will last four hours, some will, will last 30 to 40 hours. I was just really surprised how many people commented on our cat pictures, because we didn't say it was an experiment. Um, 60 no. comments in, in a few hours. Yeah, people love cats. People love That's cats. That's what that comes That's down what we to. learned. People Nothing to do with you and I, but people love cats. Okay, can we show a bad example? Yeah, that's why we have time for bad one bad example. one. Okay, uh, sure. Let's because go to the GoDaddy. Yeah, this is one that aired in the U.S. during Super Bowl that was just a, for a lot of people. Uh, Confusing. What? Well, this is just a, like a misuse of technology. See, I'm a marketer, so I'm not a technologist. And technology is only good as so far as it adds value to what yeah. people are doing. And this is just hilarious. I mean, these, these guys are huge. They have a huge amount of resources, a lot of experience online marketing. And they're, they're showing... They're an online you, business. They're an online business, exactly. Yeah. And they put a QR code on a screen. Yeah, so you're going to have to run up to the TV commercial because you've got your, your app ready and you're going to take the snapshot of the QR code. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but, you know, big companies are screwing this up all the time. They really nice. are. There you go. Uh, Last but not least, we have yes. to mention a couple things. First of all, uh, Fiona uh, received a beautiful work of art uh, from your girlfriend yeah, who was on did. the show not too long ago, Lisa Penn. It's, it's gorgeous. There it is. There it is did right a painting there. of me. Yeah. Uh, and so? you wanted to return the favor, apparently. I did because I didn't want you to feel left out. So <laughs> I did my. And see, this wasn't me this being a jerk. A I'm a terrible artist Mitchell as well. Mitchell original. Yes. I think this is a Framesies. Clayton, that's awesome because that's just like my cat, man. That's yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm a you terrible artist. You guys have the artist. same style. Absolutely awful. I was going to say you have or the same style. Mad styles, my brother. We're going to take a Mad break. Come over and turn. We have some.